Hey everyone, I'm really glad to see you here at the Cave Kids Clubhouse. We're having so much fun this month as we discover how God made us to be creative. I love looking at what God has created. I love to go outside and see all of the beautiful stuff God has made. Here, let me show you some pictures that I took recently on a trip. The other day, I drove up the Blue Ridge Parkway. It was an incredible day, seeing all the majestic mountains. I hiked, I hiked over to the falling water cascades up near the peaks of Otter. And every time I'm on a hike, I just cannot believe the incredible and the beautiful scenery. In the book of Genesis, it talks about when God created everything, and when God was done, God said that it was good. But God was not finished. You see, God wasn't finished with the whole universe because after he made that, God then made us, human beings. And God made us in the image of God. And then God said it was very good. Not good, but very good. And since we are made in the image of God, you are, I am, we are creative as well. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you're made in God's image. There are so many ways to be creative. But for our game this morning, today, we're focusing on one aspect of creativity, music. We're going to play Mystery Tune, or can you guess, uh, name that tune? So for this game, uh, I'm going to play a tune on the kazoo. And I warn you, I'm not very good at this. But I'm going to play it, and you're going to see how many you can guess correct. Are you ready? All right, here we go. Here's the first one. You got it? Yeah, it's Mary Had a Little Lamb. All right, try this one, okay? You ready? That's enough. Do you know it yet? Yeah, that's right. If you're happy and you know it, I know you'll get this one. Here we go. Life is but a dream. That's right. Row, row, row your boat. All right. I might be blowing this whole thing backwards. Nope. I don't know. All right, here's the next one. Do you got it? It's Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. All right, couple more. The wheels on the bus, that's awesome. All right, one more. Did you guess it? Yes, it's the itsy bitsy spider. That's awesome. Nice job, everyone. I'm not very musically inclined, but, but hopefully you figured out some of the songs. But let's keep the music theme going as we sing and we worship God. You know, we were made to worship. We were made to worship God, to praise God for who God is and how much God loves us. We won't hold back. We'll lift our voices to worship, to God together. You know, life can be crazy, and sometimes it can be hard. But no matter what's happening, all around us, we can rest in the promise of God's Word. Like we read in the uh, book of 1 Peter, verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 9, God chose you to be His people. You are royal priest. You are a holy nation. You are God's special treasure. You are all these things so that you can give Him praise. God brought you out of darkness into His wonderful light. Um, God created us to give us some praise. God gives us the courage we need to follow every step of the way. God created us. God knows everything about us. God knows what's going on in our lives. And God knows what's going on in our hearts. When you experience God's goodness and faithfulness, it makes you want to sing. It just makes you want to sing God's praises, right? So let's do it. Let's worship now. On your feet. Let's go.
just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna I just wanna thank you cause everything you made is so That was amazing. I love it when we get to sing and dance together. Um, but you know, when you're a kid, there's one question people always ask you. I'll start it out and you see if you can finish. What do you want to, do you know it? What do you want to be when you grow up? Do, do you, old, older adults ask you that? You know, it's funny how adults ask kids that question. Well, because the truth is, None of us know exactly what, God, what God's plans are for us in the future. We tend to forget that God can use us in big ways no matter what. No matter what. When we grow up, whatever we choose to be. And speaking of God using us in big ways, we have another great Bible story today. And it's all about Esther. So go ahead, take a seat, and watch today's story. The Bible. It's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Esther, Esther was the queen of Persia. Wait, what? Queen? Esther didn't become queen in the usual way. See, her father wasn't a king, and she wasn't from a noble family. It's just me and cousin Mordecai. In fact, Esther was Jewish. Many of God's people had been captured and brought to Babylon when their home, Judah, was conquered. Then Babylon was taken over by Persia. So Esther grew up in a land that wasn't her own. When Esther's parents died, her cousin Mordecai raised her as his very own daughter. Always remember what our scriptures say. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your strength. One day, a new king named Xerxes came to power in Persia. He was so impulsive that he actually fired his queen, Vashti, simply for refusing to show up at a wild party. She will never see me again. When Xerxes had finally calmed down, he had realized he now had no queen. I have no queen. He would have to find a new one. I must find a new one. So the king decided to hold a contest. He ordered his officials to gather the most beautiful young women in the land and put them through an entire year of beauty treatments. Esther was one of those girls chosen. Cousin Mordecai, what do I do? Don't tell anyone you're from a Jewish family. I have chosen my new queen. <clears throat> Drum roll. My new queen is Esther. Mm-hmm. Me? Assume the queenly royal crown. I might have to resize it. Just as Xerxes had so impulsively switched queens, he also promoted a royal official named Haman, higher than all of the other nobles in the kingdom. Bow to me, you fools! Haman was delighted when all of the officials outside the palace bowed low before him. 
When he discovered that Mordecai refused to bow, he was enraged. You have to bow. Somebody make him bow. Haman was so angry. He made a plan to destroy not only Mordecai, but all the Jews in the land. He laid it out for the king. Your Majesty, these Jews live differently than everyone else. They don't obey your laws. Fiddlesticks, that's just wrong. Precisely. Give the order to destroy them. Consider it done. Xerxes agreed to the terrible decree. Messengers took the letter all over the kingdom. Hear ye, hear ye. On the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, all Jews are to be killed. Hear ye, hear ye. When Mordecai and the other Jews discovered the horrible news, they dressed in rough clothing and wept bitterly. Mordecai sent a message to Esther in the palace, telling her what Haman had done. You must ask the king to save our people. Esther was devastated. She sent a response to her cousin. No one can come before the king unless he sends for them. If I do it, I'll die, unless he reaches out his gold scepter to me. Mordecai sent his answer right back. You may not escape, even though you're queen. Who knows? It's possible that you became queen for just a time like this. He's right. Here, tell this to Mordecai. Gather all the Jews. Don't eat anything for three days. I and my servants will fast too. Then I'll go to the king. Esther faced an impossible dilemma, but she took three days to prepare her heart and her mind. Bring my most beautiful royal robes. Heart racing, Esther entered the throne room. Across the long hall, she saw the king seated high on the throne. Breathless, she waited for him to see her. Please, please, please. The king looked up, his dark eyes locked on Esther's face. And then he smiled. He reached out his golden scepter. Thank God. What is it, Queen Esther? I'll give you anything, up to half my kingdom. Esther could have made her request right away, but she knew she would have a better chance if she made the king curious. King Xerxes, if it pleases you, Come to a feast I've prepared today. Oh, and bring Haman. Consider it done. Esther created an elaborate feast for the king and his number two official. <laughs> Look at me, you peasants, invited to the queen's banquet. At the meal, King Xerxes once again tried to discover what Esther wanted. I'll give you anything up to half my kingdom. Once again, Esther held her ground and waited for the perfect moment. I'd like you and Haman to come to another feast tomorrow. Then I'll answer your question. The king agreed, and Haman spent the whole evening bragging to all of his friends. You guys, the queen thinks I am the bum. <laughs> but the second feast was a different story. As before, Esther prepared an incredible meal. Both Haman and the king were quick to dig in. What do you want me to do for you? I'll give you up to half my kingdom. Esther took a deep breath. Something told her this was the right moment. Your Majesty, let me live. Please spare my people. We have been sold to be destroyed. Haman paled and choked on his fillet, but the king's face flushed red with rage. Who is the man who has dared to do such a thing? Esther turned her gaze on Haman. Haman is the one. In a panic, Haman threw himself at the queen. Totally didn't mean it. Please, please, please let me live. You dare attack the queen? Take him away. That very night, Haman was killed, and the king created a new order that would allow the Jews to be saved. We will celebrate this day with great joy. God had given Esther a surprising position in a foreign nation, and when the time was right, she would use all she had been given to save her people. Welcome back. 
You know, God gave Esther a surprising position in a faraway nation. When the time was right, she used all that was given to make a big difference. You know, she used her creativity to save her people. God gave you special gifts too. God has a plan for your life that you'll be able to discover more and more as you get older. And just like Esther was created for a very important job, God created you for a purpose. Can you say that with me? God created you for a purpose. I, for one, can't wait to see what God's got planned for you. So let's pray and thank God for giving us a purpose. Words are on the screen. One, two, three. Dear God, thank you for not only creating each one of us in here, but also creating us for a purpose. It feels great to know that we can play a part in your story. Thank you for the story of Esther that shows us that you have a plan and a purpose for each one of us. We know that we can trust you no matter what. Please help us to discover what your purpose is for our lives. We love you and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God had a big purpose in mind for Esther. And I love what Mordecai wrote in that letter. What did it say? It said, it's possible that you became queen for a time just like this. Just like God had an important purpose for Esther, God had the most amazing purpose and plan when he sent his son Jesus to us. You see, God sent Jesus to save the world because Jesus came to be our savior. And we can have a relationship with God that will last forever. God created you for a purpose. And you might be wondering what exactly your purpose is. Sometimes it's something big and, and exciting that God does through you over lots and lots of years. Or sometimes it's just the day-to-day -day things as you choose to use the gifts that God has given you. A lot of times it's both. Just pay attention to the gifts God gave you. And when you get a chance to use them, do it. You can also think about the things that excite you or are the things that, that, that make you sad. Maybe you have the skills and the ideas to help solve a problem that you see. There are so many ways that you can live out God's purpose for your life. And we're going to dig a little bit deeper into that, what that might look like next week. So be sure to be here at the Cave Kids Clubhouse. And remember, get your parents to go ahead and download the activity sheet called God Times. It's somewhere in the link around me so you can spend a little time with God this week. I'll see you next week. Goodbye.